Hey, welcome to this edition of Thrive. As always, I hope it finds you well and that life is going good for you. You know, speaking of life, you know, it never ceases to amaze me at how people so often misunderstand the, the, the concept of destiny. You know, you listen to people talk and you get this idea that for many people, destiny is a very fatalistic thing. Um, it's, it's unalterable. It's, it's going to happen. That, it, that it's fate, that it's karma in some form. That, as I say, you, you can't change it, that you can't control it, that you don't have to do anything. Um, it's going to just unfold no matter what. You're just a, a bit player in the game of life. And yet, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, the Bible teaches us two very important truths, I think, about destiny. The first is that that God's destiny for your life is good. That it's, his destiny for your life is, is better than you would have uh, dared to make for yourself. In Jeremiah 29, 11, there's that passage which is quoted often. Um, and really in it, it, it reminds us that, that God says, that, I know the plans I have for you, plans to build you up, to give you a hope and a future. You see, what that tells us is that our future is not predicated on our past. Your destiny is not determined by past events necessarily. It means that if you've had a bad start to life, if you were disadvantaged, uh, you've made bad choices, uh, you've had a painful past, uh, things have happened to you that were totally beyond your control. It means that if these things are part of your story, They've shaping you and they're shaping how you see life, but they don't have to determine your future. The second truth that the scriptures teach us is that, um, and I think it's just as important as the first, that God has a plan, a good plan and purpose for our lives, is that we get to choose our destiny. You see, it's not just going to happen whether you like it or not. It's not going to just unfold. It's not written in the stars. The Bible says that you have a choice when it comes to your future, when it comes to your destiny. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, as the people of God are preparing to enter into the plans and the purposes that he has for them, just as God has plans and purposes for our life today. This is what he says. He says, um, I'm setting before you today a choice. In other words, this is where you get to choose your, your destiny. He says, I'm, I'm setting before you life or death, blessing or curse. Choose life. You see, he's saying, you know, there are two, two options for you. There are two destinies, if you want to use that term, before you. And you get to choose which one. You see, the reason I say that is that we, we talk a lot today about personal freedom and about rights. And I, I understand the needs to safeguard freedoms and, and, and certain rights. But you know, the, the only true freedom that you and I have is the freedom of choice. That's the only true freedom that we have. And here's the thing, though. Once we've made a choice, we become bound by that choice. We become, for want of a better term, a slave of that choice. You see, once, you, once you've made a choice, it rules everything else out. You see, the choices that we make determine our destiny. They determine our future. When I chose to marry Anne... I, I was no longer free to have relationships with anyone else. Uh, just the same as when you choose to work wherever you work, you're no longer free to work somewhere else. Uh, when you choose to live where you do, you're, you're now bound by that and you can't live, by, by definition, somewhere else. And, and the reason I say that is that the, the choices we make are going to determine the quality of our life. The choices we make are either going to bring us into fulfillment. They're going to bring us joy. They're going to bring us hope. They're going to bring us to the place that God intends for us to be so that he can outwork his plan of goodness, of hopefulness, of joy in our lives. Or the choices we make are going to rob us of that. 
Uh, they're going to bring us heartache. They're going to bring us frustration and disappointment. And I say that because if you're not experiencing the fullness of life, uh, if you are not experiencing the joy that was intended for your life to, to have, if you're not living out of the fullness that the scriptures tell us is ours through our relationship with God, then it's not that God has withheld. It's not that God has a plan for your life that is second class compared to someone else's plan. It's because of the choices that you've made. It's the fact that you're not enjoying life, the fact that you're not where you want to be, the fact that you feel like your dreams are dying uh, and that that beyond you says more about the choices that you've made than it does about anything else. And it, as a consequence, it means that you have the freedom to move beyond that simply by making another choice. You see, in, in Psalm 34 verse 10, it's, it says, those who seek the Lord uh, will lack no good thing. You see... <clears throat> Because our future is not determined by our past, but is being determined by the choices we make on an ongoing basis. When we seek the Lord, we, we lack no good thing. And that means that um, and instead of us trying to um, make choices that are going to bring us fame or, or bring us success, instead of striving to uh, to build a reputation, to be financially secure, uh, to, to rely on yourself, basically. What it's saying is that when you make choices to seek God first, then you'll lack no good thing. Then your life will begin to bring you into the place that your heart longs for and God intended for you to be. It's when you seek him first that you begin to discover the outworking of his side of your destiny, his plan for goodness, for, for, for hopefulness, for, uh, to know his, his joy and his peace, to know his, his, the, the goodness of his uh, kingdom at work in your life. That's why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of heaven rather than all these other things, uh, because that choice is going to take us closer to uh, the heart of God than anything else. And so I just want to encourage you with that thought that your destiny is in your hands. The plans that God has for you will be outworked on the basis of the choices you make. And that if you feel that God is withholding, it's because of the way that you've made choices and that shaped the way that you see the world rather than, than God himself. So uh, I leave that with you. Hopefully it's something to think about. I look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.